Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Sarasota, Florida. It's great having you in person and also those of you who are watching on your devices. A special welcome to our returning guests, our seasonal folks that are starting to make their way back. Uh, so welcome and if you are a first time guest, please include your name and contact information in the car pew card in front of you um, so we can personally welcome you here. It's great having you all here. If you're coming back after a time away, you might be, or first time here, you might, it's kind of darker in here than normal. Um, we've had some electrical issues and um, our lighting isn't at full capacity. We don't have our organ um, and we also don't have heat or AC. Um, so if you're wondering why it's a little cooler, that is why. Um, we are in the process of getting it worked out. Um, thanks, Rick, for continuing to keep calling different electricians to try to get this project done. Um, so we're, we're, we, we're, getting, we're getting to a point where we probably have a bid. So that's a good thing. Uh, so um, thanks, Rick, and everybody that's been kind of being working on it. Um, as we know, we, we want to get back to full full electricity here. I mean, we've been doing pretty well without it, but it, it's time. Uh, want to welcome back also Ethel. Back. Glad you're back after your time recovering. Um, so glad you're here. Sorry that the organ isn't played because usually you sit there to hear the organ and the p organ and the choir direct choir and everything. So you might have to switch over there um, um, next week. <laughs> um, we have a flower on by the near the baptismal font. Um, Joan Aspland, um, a regular attender here, has completed her baptismal journey, um, has entered into her heavenly home, has died, um, and so we continue to pray for um, her family and friends and um, know that she is um, in her resurrection. Um, you're going to hear this announcement, a couple of these announcements probably twice because they're important, next Sunday. Um, we have starting our where we have been, where we've traveled. So we're gonna focus on the Scandinavian countries and Germany. So if you've traveled those places, make sure you bring some um, memorabilia. We're gonna have tables out in the fellowship hall during coffee hour for it and bring some food from that area or anything that you like. And then the music will also be from Scandinavian countries and Germany. So Rick, I kind of stole your thunder a little bit, but well, I'm going, to bring, right. I'm going to bring some uh, breakfast food, some uh, probably some brats and some sauerkraut for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I'm sure there will be some that definitely would like that. Go for it, Rick. <laughs> okay. So we have two birthdays this week. Today it's Anna Williamson, and tomorrow it's Jennifer Collis. So, John, can you start us off with happy birthday? <laughs> both have a blessed day each and every day. Community Meals had 45 people attending this past Tuesday and served 79 meals. And just to FYI, last year we served 2,198 guests and served 4,583 meals. And that was just in one Tuesday. And yesterday, the food pantry served 86 families consisting of 196 individuals, which includes 18 children under 18 years of age. So we'd like to continue to thank all the volunteers that give their time to keep these things up and running. Pastor Ashley's e-blast this week thanks everyone who made Christmas worship and activities happen this year. And a big thank you to John Ferreira for his flexibility and and switching everything to piano. So we had our, and then in addition, a, a duplicate, we had our first Find Peace in Your Week worship service on Tuesday, and several community meal guests stayed and said they would return next week. Hopefully the word will spread about the service and more will attend each week. And if you want to hand out flyers for it, they are available in the narthex, so there is more in her e-blast, so be sure to read it. 
Making Joyful Noise. Watch this short and entertaining vlog on Sunday's worship music by our Director of Music Ministries, John Ferrer. A new one is online every Thursday. And also the new sign-up sheets for flowers and bulletins is in the narthex, so sign up early to avoid the rush. Some ministry opportunities this week, Sunday school during fellowship, today after the service, community meal at 5.30 on Tuesday, Wednesday we have property at 8 a.m., Bible study at 4, and also on Wednesday, handbells at 6 and choir at 7. Uh, food pantry bagging on Thursday at 9.30 in the morning and distribution on Saturday at 9 a.m. Yeah. So, and then also on Thursday, St. Paul Prayer Zoom titled Talking with God. And again, that's Thursday at 4 p.m. So upcoming and ongoing. Next Sunday, we'll be focusing on Scandinavia and Germany. So get out your travel logs and mementos and join us during coffee hour following worship in the fellowship hall. A big hit last year was the food from different states. So this year we, we request that you bring some type of food that pleases your taste buds to share during coffee hour. So look forward to the brats and the sauerkraut. So uh, you are welcome to share stories from that week's uh, continent. And January 14th, there's a free concert at Arlington Park sponsored by the Arlington Park Neighborhood Association. So let's be good neighbors and show up to get to know who lives near our church. The concert will be from noon to three with Pazri, a local music group offering genre bending traditional folk in bluegrass music. So that's next Sunday. Monday, January 15th from one to three, Hope Seeds will be packing seeds in the fellowship hall. We fill several thousand small bags of seeds which will be sent to several countries so families can grow their own food. So come when you can and leave when you must. Last but not least, Shrove Saturday is going to be here earlier this year. The date is February 10th at 5 p.m. We will be having our annual potluck and a show. We have a sign-up sheet in the narthex, or excuse me, in the fellowship hall, and we are looking for someone to coordinate the kitchen. But also we need help with setup, cleanup, food uh, preparation, and of course people to be in the show. So if you want to be in the show, please sign up. It seems to be exciting. We've got a couple acts already, and so we're going from there. So we're looking for anyone and everyone to be a part of this St. Paul tradition. And this year's show is a loose adaptation of America's Got Talent, aptly named Sarasota Has a Little Talent. So please join us, everyone is welcome. And then Pastor Ashley told me this one. You see a trend here? At our weekly Bible study, she asked an elderly gentleman, Walt, to open the meeting with prayer. Walt did so in a soft voice. Another man, straining to hear, shouted, I can't hear you. Walt replied, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> when I asked my friend if she was planning to attend church, she just shook her head. I haven't gone in a long time, she said. Besides, it's too late for me. I've probably broken all seven commandments already. Thank you, Rick. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today. We'll start our worship service with a little bit of epiphany, as we January 6th was yesterday, and then we'll after our gathering hymn, we'll kind of be moving into Baptism of Our Lord Day, so a dual celebration day today. So we continue with our prayer.
please rise as you are able to read the Epiphany Gospel from Matthew chapter 2. You can see we kept the nativity scenes up on the small altar, and, and the wise men are right in front. They're even kind of covering the baby Jesus. They're front and center today. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he had sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had, they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with his Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you look at one of the nativity scenes at the small altar, you're going to see that there's four wise men. One just kind of appeared out of nowhere. We had three at one point, and now there's four. And we also know that the Bible actually doesn't say that there were three kings. It doesn't say how many. So maybe it's not necessarily wrong that there's now four wise men at, um, at, in this nativity scene. We often think of three because of the gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the Bible just says there were kings. And so we will sing um, We Three Kings for our gathering song today.
be the Holy Trinity. One God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I invite us to a time of silence and reflection. God, our rock and our refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken, the time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near by the authority of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer of the day. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for special music from our St. Paul singers.
Thank you, choir. Well, I see a lot of young at heart today rather than the young in age, so um, I will share our uh, children's message with everybody. And so it's the idea of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And so it's not Frankenstein, as we often, uh, there's a lot of memes about Frankenstein instead of frankincense. Um, Frankenstein seeing baby Jesus. Um, but I have frankincense, it's, it's an incense, it's a smell, it's these kind of things. And so, same with myrrh. And so after, you can bless yourself with this. And so, as you leave today, I'll, be, I'll have this out. And as I receive, if you want a sign of the cross on your hand or on your forehead as a blessing, um, in frankincense, we'll, we'll do that as we leave today. So it would have been longer if the kids would have been here, but that's all right. We'll uh, let Daniel keep on going with our scripture readings today. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, a darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God said that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Psalm 29. We will read it responsively by verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The third reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 19th chapter. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not heard, heard that, there, that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what, then, were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Word of God. Word of life. 
Please rise as you're able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. As I've been saying, I really like the way Christmas Eve fell this year on a Sunday. I may be a minority about that, though. But the one problem that I have with it is then Epiphany is then on a Saturday. Christmas Day, we start counting the 12 days of Christmas, which brings us to January 5th. And then Epiphany is always January 6th, which was yesterday. And the first Sunday after the Epiphany is Baptism of Our Lord Day. So there is no good way, unless we had a special worship service yesterday, to celebrate both Epiphany and Baptism of Our Lord Day on a Sunday without doing it together. They are both important days in the church year and in the life of Christians. I never want to miss them. So we started our worship with Epiphany and the wise men finally getting to see Jesus and bringing the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But we don't stay very long with Jesus being under two years old. We skip ahead of the, to the beginning of his public ministry with his baptism by John in the River Jordan. As one pastor wrote, during this brief season between Christmas and Lent, we are invited to leave miraculous births and angel choirs behind and seek the love, the majesty, and the power of God in seemingly mundane things, in rivers and voices, doves and clouds. It reminds me of the Howard Thurman poem, The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart, and to radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do, in all that we say, then the work of Christmas begins. And that's what we have today with Jesus' baptism. As another pastor wrote, Jesus' baptism inaugurated his public ministry. The Gospel of Mark describes how the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem flocked to John's baptism. And so did Jesus. Jesus' baptism was an act of solidarity with the rest of the community in the spirit of John's transforming mission. It was an act of solidarity with the people. It was Jesus becoming one with the people. He identified himself with the faults and failures, the pains and the problems of all the broken people who had gathered at the Jordan River. By wading into the waters with them, he took his place with us. And that's only part of the story. The next part is when the heavens were torn open with a new way of loving. God's voice proclaimed, you are my son, my the beloved, with you I am well pleased. 
I absolutely love this image that Jesus, before he did anything publicly, there had been no miracles, no preaching, nothing that makes him spectacular in the crowds. He is just one of the many that have come to be baptized. And a voice from heaven proclaims him beloved and well-pleasing in God's sight. So just as he came and took his place with us in the waters of baptism, the same saying that he received from the Father, we too receive. We are beloved. You are beloved. We are pleasing in God's sight. You are pleasing in God's sight. But it wasn't just a voice that came down, but also a dove. It kind of reminds me of worship last week. After worship, when I was receiving everybody, a bird flew inside the sanctuary. You can see it up on the screen. It's at the very top of the screen. You can see our pyramid and then a little bird right on top. Well, this didn't happen until later because we tried keeping the doors open during coffee hour, hoping it would fly out. But no, I came back later in the afternoon and it was still in here. And Rick and I opened up doors and tried shooing it out, but not until it landed on the baptismal font and then on the railing to the altar and then up on the altar itself did it finally leave with some of Rick's encouragement. I don't think it was a dove, but I did have to smile and think of this Sunday's scripture as the Spirit blessing this place. Now the dove that we hear about in our scripture that came down upon Jesus wasn't just a bird, but the Holy Spirit that came into him. In this one act, we have our triune God present. We have God the Father's voice. We have God the Son in Jesus and God the Holy Spirit in the dove. No wonder why baptisms have taken on such an important aspect of followers of Jesus' lives. He told us to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit just as he was baptized. Another part of the story that we may miss at times if we don't pay attention to the other readings for today is about the word of God or the voice of God. We remember that we believe that Jesus is the word of God, the word made flesh. So in our first reading, it tells a story of when God began creating. The Lord spoke the world into being. It was through the Lord's voice that light and darkness, earth and sea, animals and humans all came into creation. This word that created the world then had flesh put upon it in Jesus. And then in our psalm, we hear all about the voice of the Lord. This voice makes the mountain skip and dance. Do you remember Jesus saying that with faith, the disciples can move mountains? And then, of course, the voice of the Lord in Jesus' baptism. As one scholar wrote, it's like God is saying, this is my cosmos, this is my world in creation. And then again, this is my son, my beloved, my Christ, and they cannot be separated. And that's the beauty of baptism. It connects us to one another and to creation. That same wind or spirit or breath that hovered over the waters at creation is the same one that hovered over Jesus at his baptism, over the new disciples from Ephesus in the book of Acts, over every baptism that has been in this place, including the 12 that have happened here in my time, Daniel and Grace, Charlie, Kalani, Ayla and Aaron, Stella, Ethan, Alexandra, Ashton, Marin, and the most recent, Julian, on December 28th. Yet, the Spirit doesn't just hover over us at baptism, 
but every single day. Just like the words of the next song, Born and Cry, the Holy Spirit is with us in every part of our lives. Today is just the day we celebrate and remember how our baptism affects our lives as we live into our baptismal journey of faith. Thanks be to God. I always like to leave with a reflection question for the week and our Bible study, which is right after um, Bible study, su Sunday school hour, right after, cof right after worship during coffee hour. Um, we'll also be talking about it. And so the question today is, how will you celebrate your baptism today? We continue with our hymn of the day, Born in Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. Inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Uplift leaders to share the truth of your word in community. Encourage us to live into the promises of baptism, working for justice and peace in all the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, God of thunder and mighty waters. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. Summon the stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give strength to your leaders, God who is present in every country and community. Raise up leaders committed to equity and healing. Grant them discernment and compassion as they lead in love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us. God of strength, accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and suffering. Be especially with those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer chain, <clears throat> for the names listed in our bulletin this morning, for those who are suffering from COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, for healthcare workers and law enforcement officers, for the prayers upon the community prayer cross, for Ukraine, for the Middle East, for Japan, for the people of Perry, Iowa, for any victims of natural or human-made disasters, for St. Paul members, especially Debbie Rado, Michael Ryder, Stella Reynolds, Blake, Kendall, Mark, Nicole, and Tyler Riley, for our preschool teachers and students, especially Eliza, Asa, Arnold, Jace, Abigail, Vivian, Ms. Volmani, and Ms. Lillian. God of grace, encourage this congregation, God who calls and sends disciples. Guide us in accompanying, learning from, and serving our neighbors on the margins following the example of Jesus. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve, even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share God's peace with one another as we turn our hands into hearts. Well, we do not pass the offering plates around the pews. Um, we do have them available to you as you enter or leave the sanctuary. 
Um, we also have online giving through our website for those of you who are watching on your devices. And this is the time our ushers are bringing up the offering for today's. And then we will continue with the offering prayer. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in, who, in whose name we pray. Amen. We have a spiritual communion prayer for those of you who are watching on your devices and cannot physically eat or drink of Jesus' body and blood. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. I love you ab above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We continue with the communion liturgy for those of us in person. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. You we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire and warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own, that also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. For those of you who'd like Holy Communion at your seats, this is a time to raise your elements for blessing and consecration. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when, with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus, holy God and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Holy Spirit. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray as we sing the Lord's Prayer.
at Jesus's table. Heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. Thanks be to God. This is a time for those of you who like Holy Communion at your seats to take the host wafer. That this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink. And those of you who would like to come to the altar for Holy Communion may do so at the usher's instruction.
please rise as you are able. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all, and to your glory now and forever. Amen. And receive the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn today is We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.